Hi, this is Kevin with Map Practical. Uh, so this is part two of the tutorial one for applications of GIS. This is uh, just getting used to Arc Pro. It's like your first time in Arc Pro. So we've already uh, fixed and defined the projection on some raw shape files, created a feature data set within the Project Geo database, and then went ahead and uh, normalized everything in NAD27 because we're going to be creating a custom projection for the state of Montana that the uh, Forest Service Region 1 uses. All right, so here we are in Arc Pro and we're on our map view. And if we right click over here in the contents pane and go to the properties for that map view and then to the coordinate system selection here, this uh, little menu will pop up. And then over here, instead of choosing from one of the known coordinate systems, we're going to make a custom coordinate system. So Region 1 of the Forest Service uses a custom coordinate system that I've laid out inside the instructions, and these will be linked uh, below the video. So we're going to have to set all these parameters specifically to create that custom projection. So underneath the drop down here, we're going to say New Projected Coordinate System, and a whole other menu is going to pop up. And then we're going to go ahead and work through this thing. So I'm going to call this Forest R1. So that's a Forest Service Region 1 projection. And maybe I'll just throw an S in there for Forest Service. All right. And then it's in meters, because that's what we're looking for. Um, it's not a transverse mercator. It's an Albers. And you can take a look. Look at all the projections that are inside of the uh, Esri software. Ours is close to the top, Albers. And then we're going to have to work through all these different parameters. So the false easting is going to be 600,000. One more. There we go. So there's 600,000. The false northing is zero. The central meridian is going to be a negative 109.5. So that's west of Greenwich, right? That negative is important. That's how it knows that it's west. Um, our first standard parallel is going to be 46. And our second standard parallel, because this is a conic projection, right? So it needs two standard parallels. It's 48. And then our latitude of origin is going to be 44. Super. Uh, and then we have to define the geographic coordinate system. And in this case, as I was saying, it's, um, there we go, it's a NAD 27. So they're kind of old school over there. So this is in uh, alphabetical order. So you got to find all the NADs. There you go. And this is a very specific one. It turns out that it's the NAD 27 definition 1976. So we choose that. We just make sure all of our parameters are good. Save it. All right. And, um, and then we want to go ahead and right click on this guy and say add to favorites. The reason we do that is so that it shows up up here in our favorites and that way it doesn't um, it doesn't disappear. So if you closed Arc Pro without um, without saving it, it wouldn't be anywhere so you'd have to recreate it. So if we save it to our favorites at least it'll be there on this particular machine so it's saved locally with the install of Arc Pro. Alright, and then we hit OK and we should see, there we go. So that's the projection that the Forest Service Region 1 uses works out pretty well. All right, in the instructions, I'm going to send you guys out to the NRIS website. So let me get that going, and it'll pull up a web page that I'll bring over to, so you guys can see it. I was thinking about it. Hmm. Word is not responding. That's funny. I'll double check and make sure I got an internet connection. It appears that I do. Well, the other thing I can always do Oh, there we go. Finally pops up. All right, so this is the State Library website. I'm going to go ahead and just refresh. Wow, it's having a really hard time. It's going to make it difficult for me to show it to you guys. Huh. All right. Um, let's see here. What's the problem? This is usually a no-brainer piece of cake. Let's see if we can find it here. Data, here we go, Geographic Information Clearinghouse. If we go to that one, all right. So um, back again to what about data list? There we go. So that's what we're looking for. Don't know what was happening there, but basically we're just looking for forests. All right, and we'll search that. And this comes up, and it's under the historic records, and it's the National Forest and Ranger Districts for 2012. So you click on that guy. That was a weird quirk, huh? And then download data. And what you're going to end up doing is downloading a zipped 
shape file that's going to represent all of the forests in Montana. Okay, so we can go ahead and minimize that guy. And I've already gotten that data and unzipped it. I'm kind of assuming that people know how to unzip data, so I don't think I need to go through that process for you. So I'll go ahead, and here we are um, in my workspace. I'll go back to my original version of this that I was working on. And in my original raw data, there's my national forests. Copy those guys. And then back to the version that I'm working on right now for you guys. And we're working in this raw data. And there we go. So we already actually had it in there. Didn't realize that. That's okay. <clears throat> but that's how you go about it. You'll have to unzip it, obviously. Um, and then you'll have to refresh. So you go back to your catalog view. Go to your folder. Make sure you refresh it. Super. And then if you look inside where you put it in your raw data, you should see it. And then if we go in there, ooh, we might have to refresh that guy and see if we can see it. Well, let's take a look and see if it's in there. There we go. See, it's strange. It will only show that GIF, but um, you have to go over to the catalog view over here instead of the contents pane, and then you can see the shape file. And then we can take a look at the properties and the spatial reference. Looks like this guy is in a Montana State Plain. Great. Um, we want to go ahead and import this into our geo database. So, I'm going to go to my geo database, to my Montana data, import, feature class, and I'm just going to go with single, and then I'm going to go ahead and just drag it in. Uh, if I can get to it, let's see here. Yep, there we go. Drag that right into the geoprocessing environment. And the thing with the singles, you have to um, rename it. I'm just going to give it the same exact name. So this is just going to be actually Montana Forests. Sometimes when I'm doing just a single, I'll still choose the multiple import option because then you don't need to rename it. And then I'll run it. And it's going to import that guy. Super, looks like it ran. And now I'll check it in my geo database, in my Montana data, and Montana forests right there. And they should be in what? They should be in NAD27. Why? It started out in Montana State Plain. Well, I imported it into a feature data set. And a feature data set will uh, impart whatever projection or coordinate system that you set on any data that you import into it. And if we're lucky, it won't make a liar of me. There it is, NAT 27. Okay, very good. Now back to map one, and it's already put it onto the map, All right? Well, that's kind of handy. But you can see that it's a little bit messy. First off, let's, uh, let's throw it above. Uh, let's see, county seats, streams, and we want the lakes there, but we want it above the counties. Okay. So there you go. Let's take a look. If we right click on it and take a look at the attribute table, we can get a feel for what's in it. Um, attributes are kind of uh, become part of the map layout. If you want to see everything, you got to kind of make it bigger. So we'll take a look. And so it's got interesting information about its acres, about the perimeter, so on and so forth. But the forest name is right here. And then those forests, each one of those is in a different ranger district. So we want to dissolve all these interior lines just by the forest name. So I'll go ahead and close that. And then I'm going to go to my geoprocessing over here, and I'm going to look for the dissolve tool. And it found it pretty quick. Open the dissolve tool. I'm going to drag my Montana forest in there. And then I'm going to have to go ahead, and it named it forest dissolve, which is fine, but I want to make sure that it goes inside my Montana data. So then it's going to become uh, projected at NAD27. All right, um, and then this is going to be the dissolve. Okay, save. So that's that, and then we have to choose a dissolve field. So our dissolve field on this one is going to be forest, right? So we're doing it by forest name, not by the ranger district. We'll go with all the defaults on the rest of it and hit run. And it should automatically add that data, and it looks like it did. Very good, so I'm going to turn off the original forest. In fact, I can remove that data. We don't need it anymore. So we've got our dissolved data. And then I'm going to double click on this guy. And oh, that's not the way it works anymore. I'm thinking arc map. If I want to look at the symbology, I just need to select this guy. And then I need to go to the appear up here and then the symbology tab. And it turns out we're going to do unique values, right? And we're going to have to. Um, it's looking for the field of forest, great. And I think we need to add all values. If you add all values, then you'll get them all. There they are. Those are the different individual forests, but we're gonna have to do away with these ugly pastels because forests just don't belong in Easter egg colors. 
So let's go to something that's more foresty. That looks pretty good. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got it. Let me pull up my instructions, make sure I'm giving you guys the right information. All right, uh, one of the other requirements of this lab is for us to go ahead and figure out the total area of forest for the entire state of Montana, right? So one way to do that would be to open up the attribute table. So we'll get the attribute table again. Um, and now when you're inside the attribute table, you can add a field. So if we add a field, we'll click on this and it adds a whole nother um, thing to it. So you're going to have to name it down here. And so this is going to be uh, area. And I ask you to do it in km squared, right? So square kilometers. Um, and I think you have to hit enter. There we go. And then under long or data type, instead of long, we're going to do a double. And that's just the, the number of decimal places so we don't lose anything to rounding. And then I want this thing to be numeric. Uh, decimal places, yeah, I probably can get away with two. Two is enough. So we don't have too much rounding error. So the thing is, it's a little bit different than ArcMap. Once you create a field, you have to save up here. So you save it, and it's going to apply those changes. And now if we go back, back over one, now we have our actual uh, new, new uh, attribute field. And we right click on this guy, and we're going to do calculate geometry. So property, um, we're going to calculate area, geodesic area. And it's going to ask for the unit. And we're going to go with square kilometers and then coordinate system. So you can choose the current map or you can choose any one of the layers. I'm just going to use the current map because that's the full region one projection. And then when you hit OK, you'll get it and it should calculate them out. So here are all the areas for all these different forests. So but what we wanted to know was the total area of forest. So if I right click and go to statistics, they'll pop up over here. Okay, so it gives you a chart that will show you the distribution of the data. It shows you the mean, so forth. The sum is the total area in square kilometers. So we're looking at 77,530.94 square kilometers of forest in Montana. And what I ask for on this particular exercise is for you to figure out what percent of the total land of Montana that represents. So how would you figure that out? You don't even really need to calculate it in GIS, but you do need to figure out the total square kilometers for the state of Montana. Well, that's pretty easy because you have all the counties down here. So you just open the attribute table for the counties, create another field, calculate it, get it sum, and then just do some simple math to figure out how much forest is there out of all the land in Montana. All right, so we'll close these charts out. Close this one and close this one. Back to our layout. All right, so we've been working in this map, but if we wanted to create a true layout that then we could export to a JPEG for a report or something, there's an extra step. All right, so um, to do that, what you're going to do is go up to Insert, right, and then <clears throat> New Layout. And so you'll just click a layout here, and it'll ask you which, what you want. Do you want it to be on an 8.5 by 11 page? And for Montana, an 8.5 by 11 in landscape works out pretty well. So it'll do that. And you'll notice that you have a blank page at that point. There's nothing there. Um, if you need to turn on your rulers, you can, you can do that in the layout. Um, but what you want to do here is just add some guides. So I'm going to add some guides at uh, half inch. You right click and say add a guide. Right? And right click at 10 and a half and add a guide. And at 8, because it's an 8 and a half by 11 page, right? Add a guide. And I'm just creating where the, the data frame is going to go. In Arc Pro, they call it a map frame instead of a data frame. Just another term, no big deal. So then now, we're going to insert the data into this guy. Um, let me remember, how do I do that? Oh, yes. So uh, you're going to add a map frame right here, right? So you click on this guy. And it tells you different choices, a default extent or the map that you already have. You want to use the map that you've created because all the data and the styling you've created is already there. So I'll click on that guy. And if you click once, it'll try to just put it onto the page. But I found if I click on my guides and drag it, it's going to make a data frame that's exactly the right size. And voila, there we go. So there's Montana. I don't really want this topographic map in the background, so I'm just going to turn that one off. And now, you know, we're, we're getting close to what we're hoping for, right? So for this particular exercise, I ask you guys to um, lay out uh, a map of Forest Service Region 1 and then put a legend into the map with all the uh, different forest uh, um, names, and that fits nicely just right down here. And then I also ask you guys to um, 
to try and add, add a coordinate grid to this. So that's going to be uh, still here under my map frame. And then right here is grid, right? So you can uh, look at it and say, uh, let's go with like a gray horizontal graticule. And it should automatically add it. But it's doing it every single degree. And I think that might be a little bit much. So um, I can go over here and it added it into my contents pane, right? So if I take that grid and I go to its properties, they'll show up over here, and then I can change it to have uh, the intervals be in two degree increments. The one thing you gotta know is you have to uncheck this automatically adjust interval thing. There we go. And then, um, not custom origin, but you have to go to this guy right here. Yes, and what we're looking for is um, two degrees. So we'll do two, and it automatically syncs the values, and it should have fixed it. So there it goes. Um, now, if you don't want all these ticks in between, and you don't want all of the extra lines, then you can play with those. And so we, right now we're working on the labels. We do the ticks, and actually I'm going to get rid of the ticks. I don't want those internal. Oops, uh, this is the one. There we go. So that got rid of all the internal ticks. And then the grid lines, we also have to tell that to be in the two degree intervals. Right? All right, so now we've got that one going. And then these other ticks, uh, I'm going to make those in the two degrees as well. So I have ticks on my labels, but not on anything else. All right, cool. Um, a lot of times you'll see the grid behind the state. That's a little bit trickier. One way to do it would be to go and right click on this guy and convert it to graphics and then send it to the back but that might cause you other issues. Um, a lot of these styling things is just playing around in the software until you get it right. But certainly, you're in the, in the good place now to where you can insert uh, a title, right? So you would say from insert here, you could do a north uh, arrow, you could do um, a legend, which you need to do, so that you can show all these forests. And what we're going for eventually, and let me go ahead and pull that up, is... Oops, yep, there we go. Is a map like this. So this will be your final layout. And you can see I've done quite a bit with it. So I've got a nice title, subtitle for the state. It's showing all of the, uh, the forests and those districts are labeled here in a nice legend. I also was able to pull out the, um, the totals of how much uh, of, the, uh, of the entire state is forest, right? Uh, calculate it yourself. I might have uh, thrown you guys a red herring with this, so don't just go by what I show in the video, right? And then definitely, since you made a custom projection, you need to have all of the spatial reference information on the map. Make sure your name is on there, and if you can, see if you can figure out how to get the, the grid behind the state of Montana, but still have a nice background color. It's a little bit tricky. Don't spend a ton of time. If it, if it really gives you a trouble, just um, it's fine to have the latitude and longitude over the state, but this is just one stylistic way to do it. Another thing that's interesting to play with is how you would put the Forest Service logo in there. All right, I am going to leave a few things for you guys to discover on your own, because if I tell you everything, then <clears throat> you won't remember how you figured it out, and that is definitely part of GIS. Okay, so that's what I have for you today. Thanks for watching. If this was a valuable uh, tutorial for you, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time.